the Mediterranean Sea is the largest enclosed sea in the world and one of the world's hotspots for diversity of life. Representing less than 1% of world oceans, the Mediterranean accounts for over 10% of all known species. Scientists have discovered approximately 17,000 marine species occurring in this region. Among these discoveries, there are increasing numbers of gelatinous species that have stimulated research on how and why these species bloom in various regions and on the effects these blooming occurrences have on the marine ecosystem and on human maritime activities. The ENPI Med Jelly Risk Project is an EU project involving five institutions from Italy, Spain, Tunisia and Malta in investigating jellyfish and other gelatinous creatures in respective territorial waters. Among the scientific researchers involved in this project from the University of Malta, the National Contact Scientist for the Mediterranean-wide Seaism Jelly Watch Research Program has also taken part and explains why this project was useful. The Mediterranean coasts have been undergoing many jellyfish bloom outbreaks. These are partly due to natural cycles, but also the result of environmental changes in our seas. Changes that are due to various human activities, such as maritime transport, exploitation of natural resources, and even pollution, together with the climate change impacts. Jellyfish proliferation represents a growing threat for human and marine activities in the leisure, aquaculture and fishery industries. Every year millions of baiters get stung by jellyfish, meaning high cost of basic first aid treatments for the national health services, but also losses in tourism and fishing aquaculture when blooms persist. For this reason the mad jelly risk as the first cross-border cooperation project focused on assessing the socio-economic impacts of jellyfish blooms and the implementation of mitigation countermeasures. For this to be effectively achieved, field research on the distribution of the various jellyfish blooms was necessary. The Department of Biology, in particular the Conservation Biology Research Group, has been working to implement the aspects related to the biological and environmental research of this project and to work with stakeholders to improve on possible mitigations and awareness. Conferences organized in 2014 brought together world experts and different local stakeholders to allow for better integration and awareness of jellyfish blooms, their effects and possible mitigation measures Participants included researchers, fishermen and aquaculture entities, sea users, dermatologists and first aid practitioners, but also representatives from local authorities in the transport, AFM, civil protection, fisheries and environmental sectors. Such research and awareness is useful, especially in the Mediterranean, which is one of the most populated regions of the globe. The Mediterranean coasts stretch for over 45,000 kilometers and are rich in natural beauty and cultural heritage, attracting more than 220 million tourists every year. Marine-related tourism plays an important socio-economic role in this region. Likewise, the marine environment around the Maltese Islands has attracted millions of tourists to enjoy swimming, diving, and various other marine-related activities. But as blooms of jellyfish have appeared on and off, stinging thousands of individuals, it became important to understand how these gelatinous creatures are perceived and what action may be put in place to mitigate such blooming episodes. So you have been diving here in Malta for a good number of years. What were your experiences with respect to diving and jellyfish? Mm, we've been on Malta about four, four and a half, four and a half years. Yeah. And we've we've seen 
quite a good jellyfish, but it depends on the time of year. When was the last time I saw them last year? I think year? it starts around September. Uh, last year, September, we saw loads of them at uh, Chirikawa. Up north, yeah, in Chirikawa was something. And, and it's very strange because one day you might see a lot of them and but they're in layers in the bed, and then the next day they're gone. The project has prepared information about jellyfish and this is a poster showing the different species of jellyfish that can be seen in Maltese waters and you can report back and identify any species of jellyfish during diving back to us. I bought a mask and I started to search for jellyfish. In the past years there were many jellyfish. At times I collected 40 to 50 jellyfish a day. Swimmers liked this to the point that they would not swim if they did not see me around. So you have been here in Malta for quite a few days now. What were your experiences with respect to our marine life while swimming and jellyfish? I was sting twice at the same moment after 30 seconds I've been in the water. Now I continue swimming but just before going into water I prefer to check if there are no jellyfishes. So firstly I ask the guys in the water if they are there or not. Apart from tourists, various local sea users also come to terms with gelatinous blooms. In particular, we cannot ignore fishermen that need to undertake their activities out at sea throughout the year, from coastal to offshore waters. These stakeholders were also considered in order to see how they perceived and experienced the presence of blooms. I have been a fisherman from a tender age, going out with my father and my grandfather. Immediately after my school years, I became a full-time fisherman, and I have noticed jellyfish numbers rise through the years. The greatest effect on my fishing activity is felt when blooms are so dense that it increases the chances of being stung, apart from lifting nets filled with jellyfish. رايت بدلا فلا مونتا برام ما تولد او سنين فر باين سنا ليلي هناك البدلا صارت انور ان 40 years of activity here in Saray there has been enormous change with regards to jellyfish at first jellyfish blooms were few but nowadays we may see tons of them the fried egg jellyfish may be such a case where at times there are a few while other years they're so numerous that you need to lift hundreds of kilos when lifting fishing nets packed with these jellyfish. The impacts on us directly include the obvious stings on our hands and on our lips with ugly consequences. Even tourists that come here are not aware of what jellyfish are and how painful their stings can be. During awareness campaigns and research interviews, individuals are encouraged to be involved in citizen science by reporting their sightings to researchers. 
This is particularly useful in the Mediterranean, where the higher density of coastal human activities facilitates such an involvement in marine observations. As part of the Medgellers project, our research group at the Department of Biology focuses on the distribution of gelatinous species around the Maldives Islands. Jellyfish distribution has been investigated using both marine and aerial surveys. The presence and absence of gelatinous species such as salps, comb jellies and the jellyfish and their blooms was investigated in relation to the environmental parameters. But how diverse are these gelatinous species and what role do they play in the marine ecosystem? The word gelatinous refers to their jelly consistency composed mostly of water. The so-called jellyfish are the planktonic stages of three cnidarian classes, the hydrozones, the cyphozones, and the cubozones. Some examples of hydrozones found in Maltese waters include the Valella Valella, commonly referred to as by the wind sailor, has been found to bloom in large numbers, similar to Valella Valella, Fisalia Fisalis, commonly referred to as the Portuguese man-of-war, is also a polyp colony with various specialized individuals. However, in this case, the colony forms one of the most dangerous predators and stingers in the Mediterranean. Another less dangerous but still irritant hydrozone colonial species are those belonging to the genus Forscalia, such as the Grand Siphonophore, their very long structure that may span several meters in length makes them look like snakes. Geronia proboscidalis is a very transparent hydrozoan discovered in Maltese waters in 2013 through collaboration between scuba divers and the Ciesum National Contact Scientist. The cyphozones comprise the real jellyfish species, such as the well-known Pelagia noctiluca, that has been blooming in large numbers on and off for many years, becoming the main cause for concern among swimmers, divers and fishermen. Pelagia jellyfish is an open water species, which swim vertically to surface waters at night. Another jellyfish species which has been observed to bloom is the Cotyleritza tuberculata, which looks like a fried egg when seen from above. This species is often at the sea surface and seen with fish traveling along with it. It is a non-dangerous jellyfish, often found during late summer and autumn. A less commonly found jellyfish is the Aurelia, or moon jellyfish which may bloom in various parts of the Mediterranean in spring in open waters. This genus has many species which are being studied genetically in order to improve our understanding of the real identity of these similar Aurelia species found in the Mediterranean. On the other hand, the Rhizostoma pulmo, of which this juvenile specimen observed in Maltese surface waters during med jelly risk marine surveys, grow into larger, stinging adults. The class of cubozoans is composed of jellyfish species characterized by a square-shaped umbrella with four tentacles, such as the box jellyfish. In Maltese waters, the Caribdea marsupialis, or Mediterranean box jellyfish, has been observed to bloom in harbors and marinas. These small and transparent jellyfish are known to cause painful stings. The Med Jelly Risk Project has prepared first aid booklets and information which have been distributed to dermatologists, sea users, tourists and to the public in general, so as to increase awareness of the specific jellyfish sting first aid and medication. 
Many members of gelatinous zooplankton do not sting, such as the catenophores, which move about by the repulsion of minute hair-like comb structures that illuminate as they move. Catenophores or comb jellies, such as Luocatea multicornis, have been observed to bloom in Maltese waters. Another species of comb jelly is the Borrea ovata. This species is known to feed on other comb jellyfish. With very few exceptions, jellyfish are carnivores and their prey may vary from other jellyfish to fish eggs, larvae or any other zooplankton. Climate change, global overfishing, various types of pollution, introduction of alien and invasive species are all increasing pressures on marine life. Predators of jellyfish may also be affected by these pressures. From studies on the diet composition of large Mediterranean predators, it was found that bluefin, tuna and swordfish would feed on gelatinous plankton opportunistically, while loggerhead sea turtle and the sunfish found in open waters specialized in feeding on gelatinous zooplankton. A healthy environment allows its biodiversity to provide the goods and services both humans and millions of other species need to survive. Understanding this network of interdependencies and the roles different jellyfish species play may improve integrated coastal and resource management in respect of the whole marine ecosystem.